Hi, welcome to another episode of Mildred Rides. Today I am joined with my friend Claire. Hey. We co-founded Rooting For You together and today we are off on a lovely sunny muddy gravel ride mm -hmm. with the gang. Um, we thought we'd take a few minutes to just chat about why we started Rooting For You, what we're all about, mainly because we want more people to be starting their own cycling communities. Yeah, because it's easier than you think. Yeah. So Claire, do you want to talk us through where the idea came from, how it all started? Um, yeah, well I guess the idea came from seven and a half hours of sitting in a traffic jam on the M5 <laughs> and then the M6, which is pretty hideous, but we turned it into a good thing. So me and Mildred met, uh, I gave her a lift up to Sisters in the Wild. We had this amazing magical weekend of like superwoman energy, uh, riding around, meeting new people and yeah, in brutal traffic on the way home. We were just talking about like different groups we wanted to exist and how we wanted to take a slice of that magic back with us really. Uh, and then, yeah, spoke about how I just like go and do stuff. And mm. Mildred's like, I like to think about stuff. <laughs> and we were like, this is probably a good combination and we'll meet in the middle somewhere. Um, and then, yeah, saw that rooting for, I like the name rooting for you. And then saw that it was free on Instagram and then just messaged Mildred and was like, it's happening. And that's Which where I was it started. Really grateful about because <laughs> I had spent before all of that. I had spent probably like the entire summer wanting to start something, but spending like months just trying to come up with a name. Like I overthink everything, so you're like just do it attitude was exactly what was needed and yeah basically like I was sat there like oh what could we call it and then Claire was like here we've got an Instagram account and it was just like oh great okay let's do this then and yeah. where did rooting for because rooting for you is a nice little play on words as well because it's yeah. like it's obviously like it, it kind of conveys the the, the the feeling of our group like you know we're, we're a supportive environment we're rooting for you like we're yeah we're like helping people along and like but it's also a play on words because it's rooting yeah like. <laughs> yeah so it's r-o-u-t-i-n-g um but yeah i guess it's because we were like really into like adventure riding and that kind of spirit of bike packing from sisters in the wild um so yeah it's kind of like nice where we're going to build each other up yeah pat each other on the back but also a little nod to let's go plan some fun routes exactly and it's been a really nice way to kind of explore different routes around bristol like part you know for me certainly i've learned a, a whole like a set of new routes just from mm. like you organizing your rides and then like i know there are loads of people who have joined us who you know hadn't done certain paths or certain like cycleways before and so we're introducing people to new ways of cycling around bristol which is really nice yeah and almost none of us had had a disco on a bike before oh my god we had a disco ride and it yeah. was amazing so let's okay so let's get into it so if, if someone's out there because I know that there are people out there who you know they've checked out Sisha's um, map of the, the the groups that are already around the UK and maybe you know there's not something near them so they're like well what do I do can I start one what does it take to start a group I mean we got the Instagram name yeah and I'd say you don't even need an Instagram name um, I organized like women's only rides um, before this and I just shouted out on my Instagram um, and I did the same with the coffee mornings that I organised mm. as well. I just shouted out on my Instagram. Um, but yeah, I think just like commit to a date and a time, share it publicly, um, and don't let how big or professional is it going to be stop you. Like yeah. even if only one other person turns up, like that's someone to ride with. And yeah, that's it's what a you new want. friend made. Yeah, yeah. But it was, you know, I think we were really blown away by how quickly it all picked up. I mean, just the first day of you know <laughs> announcing that we existed yeah like we already had like 100 people or so immediately like following us and people were sharing it far and wide and we had like nearly 40 people like 35 40 people on the first ride yeah and we didn't expect that at all and just yeah. all these people turned up and it's like it's not stopped i mean even through the winter mm. we've still had you know about sort of 10 people turn up for even on really really rubbish days like yeah. in the rain we've we've ridden through lakes <laughs> in the dark and still everyone's come out of it smiling yeah so um and yeah i suppose like so at the moment if we talk a bit about what we do so we at the moment we're just kind of organizing rides when we can because there's there's now four of us leading rides we've got ray and sensi mm -hmm. on board as well there are other two ride leaders um so we're just kind of like we're organizing the rides that we want to do 
because it's all about like you know not worrying too much about what everyone else wants because people are as you always say to me people are always happy just to have people to ride with and just turn up and be able to have a good time yeah so it's really important to plan the rides that you want to do because then you're stoked you're bringing all that enthusiasm with you you want to turn up yeah um and you know maybe we'd like to do them sort of semi-regularly when we've got a few more ride leaders on board we're hoping to recruit a bit more um, yeah we want to recruit a bit more what else have we sort of we've got a few sort of ideas in the works haven't we yeah i think um yeah more ride leaders is great that's a big plan um some maintenance sessions mm -hmm. some more maintenance sessions just so that people feel confident to get out on their bikes on their own as well because um, that's a really big thing. I think yeah. like I love planning routes and riding on my own, um, but I've definitely had some disasters. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a bike packing weekend because we both love that. Yeah. So like sharing that with other people would be amazing. Yeah. And just getting more people into it. Yeah. Um, There's definitely a thirst for it, which is. Yeah. And I think that's the thing actually. The kind of the biggest takeaway from um, starting up routing for you is that you'd be surprised how many people want something like this. Like, even if you feel like there's not that many people around you cycling, if you start putting a word out, like, I'm going to organise this ride, I want people to come with me, you'd be surprised at how many people will turn up or will. Just, you know, they want, they want nice groups to ride with. We've had a lot of people, you know, talk about experiences they've had with other groups where they've not felt quite welcomed. And we had so many people saying, you know, this is, a, this is what we were looking for, this is what we needed. Yeah, and loads of people who've never been on a group <coughs> ride as well because the group rides that previously have been available to them are just not the kind of place where they feel welcome. Yeah. Um, I think we're kind of like, we love bikes. Like, Brittany's great. Um, Brittany but, is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, like, we love bikes, but I think we socialise on bikes at Route yeah. Foyer. Yeah. So, like, the meeting people comes first and foremost, mm -hmm. whereas I think in more traditional cycling groups, like, you might have had more of a conversation about what someone else was riding. Yeah. And I like to think we have conversations with people rather yeah. than conversations about bikes. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about meeting people, making new friends and sharing snacks. It's a big, yeah. big part of our, our vibe is lots of snack stops. Yeah. We like snacks. And so, yeah, actually, it'd be good to sort of cover some of the other things that we do. You know, we, we, we're a no-drop group, so we always stay together. We always have one ride leader at the front and a sweeper at the back and make sure everyone stays within those boundaries. Um, we always stop if anyone needs to, if they've, get, if they've got a mechanical, we always say, you know, none of us are professionals, but between us, we have the tools and know how to figure it out together. Yeah. Um, we love to stop and take photos because it's really important. Yeah, lots of pictures. Um, why is it I important? think let's just mention snacks again. Yeah, because snacks are so are... important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I feel like the magic in rooting for you happens a lot of the time when we're not cycling as well, so we mm. always have a big photo stop or snack stop. Yeah. And that's really important because that's the moment where people aren't looking at their, or not like, not looking at their surroundings, but not having to be aware of their surroundings yeah. and manage their position on the road or look at the terrain. And you know, that's the moment where everyone just gets to like stop, meet each other, and normally share their snacks as well, which is great. Yeah. Which is, Big thing of what we do. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we've had people bring me cake. Then, oh, I was going to say we've had people bringing <laughs> like um, home home baked goods and yeah, it's been it's been it's a big part of the game. So I think it's important to mention that we're women led, uh, and I think there's loads of women led groups that have like set up around the UK over the past like year or so. Um, and New Forest Off Road Club put it really well, but there's just like a certain kind of magic that happens in a matriarchal space mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in other cycling groups. And that doesn't mean I don't like other cycling groups. Like, I like training hard. I like going fast. Like, yeah. I want to do like whatever a guy can do and preferably like, you know, a little bit better. Um, but I don't think that a matriarchal space means that it has to be slow mm. or that it's like less than that mm -hmm. but there is a certain magic that happens and I yeah. definitely feel better for having the option of being able to ride in those spaces yeah. and that doesn't mean I don't ride with guys anymore and I love them but it's just different yeah really different very different vibe yeah <clears throat> And also, you know, while it's woman-led, it doesn't mean, you know, no one's excluded, you know, mm. and anyone can come as long as they are happy to be women-led, essentially. Like, yeah. to, you know, we have lots of cis guys who come on our, 
our rides and they're they're really great allies they're really happy to kind of take a step back and just enjoy the ride but they don't dominate the conversations most of the time yeah and they benefit from the different yeah. vibe as well like it's you know there's a lot of guys who haven't felt comfortable in other places and yeah. then they come on this ride because it does feel different yeah it's magic yeah i'm really proud of it rooting for your magic makes the sunshine every ride we have been so lucky with the weather as yeah. well pretty much like i'd say like we've got like a 95 percent success rate yeah probably higher yeah i'm just thinking of that rainy dark yeah huddly <laughs> right. that was like an adventure that was so much fun we were, like road through lakes couldn't see dodging anything. frogs <laughs> like, yeah yeah there were that was an frogs. adventure yeah mm. but that's what it's all about having fun together everyone came out smiling yeah and it's just it's just a different kind of adventure isn't it yeah yeah i think we've done a good job yeah well done us go us <laughs> Well, that probably concludes it. We should go and get ready to actually lead today's ride. Yeah. Where are we going today, Claire? Um, we're going to head out east, and we're going to um, hit up some muddy bridleways and some paths. Let's go ride. <laughs> okay, we're going to go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> This is my first ride. How's it going? Fantastic, really nice, best weather ever. It's like summer for once. <laughs> Hi, I'm Val. It's the second time I'm taking part on these rides and I do take part with my partner and my little boy in here. He's only four months old. Well, he loves it because he doesn't sleep during the night, so he sleeps through the whole ride, which is great. <laughs> uh, there's been a couple of points which haven't been great, but because everybody rides together, everybody has been super helpful. I'm trying to kind of get those little sections, you know, we have to carry the trailer over. But it has been all right because everybody helps. Everybody waits for everyone. Everybody helps each other. I've just given birth four months ago, so I'm very slow, but nobody makes me feel like I'm comfortable about it or anything like that. So I don't feel like I'm keeping everybody back and it makes me want to come back. 
was our youngest ever rider. <laughs> since they began last August and really enjoying today. There's a lot of us, we've had our first puncture, we've got a baby, um, <laughs> it's sunny, it's muddy, yeah it's really good. I come back because it's like just fun and accessible and everyone's here and it's like not competitive at all. Um, you can just show up and ride like you want to ride and yeah. I'm Martine, this is my first routine for you ride. It's been really fun, um, got to take my bike on some muddy paths. It's um, yeah, really friendly, everyone's having a, having a good time and chatting and yeah, yeah, it's like a really social, um, it's a really nice vibe. Hi, I'm Sarah. I've been on quite a few routing for your rides now. Last time I came out here, I was a bit terrified of all the mud, but uh, I've done it again and it's fine. <laughs> and I don't have big knobbly tyres or anything, but I made it through. The thing that got me going on these in the first place was that you can walk up the hill if you want to, and that is absolutely true. And I have never felt the slowest or the most left behind or anything on these. It's really great. Puncture Central over yeah, here. Where did these all come from? Well, I feel like I was missing out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tom's just doing it for the fun of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gemma. Um, I've been on quite a few of the reading for your rides um, over the last kind of six months. Um, I love the chilled work vibe. Um, the fact it's women-led, um, it's not competitive. Um, can just kind of put along, chat to some people. I would describe it as a really supportive environment that's just really easygoing, but also super informative. Hi, I'm Sarah. This is my second routing for you, right? We've just uh, cycled quite a long way. We've been up a massive hill. I had to stop and walk uh, because I'm still not quite hill fit yet. There were two others, so I was quite reassured that I wasn't like the slowest person on the whole ride. It's very chilled, um, very supportive, uh, steady pace. So I feel at home and relaxed in the group. Hi there, uh, my name is Barney. My experience of group rides has never been particularly fun. Um, and these ones, to me, feel very different. It's just super chill, nobody's, nobody's trying to be better than, nobody's giving like a little snotty look about somebody else's bike, nobody is kind of cares whether or not you're slower or faster, what you're wearing. People aren't really judging and that's, that's really nice. Don't really find that a lot in, 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 in bikes. 